Aloha and welcome to Spirit Chat Radio. Today I'm going to be talking about how to allow the universe and the spirit guides to guide you. Um, this question was given in my higher purpose learning group. And as you guys know, sometimes I make podcasts often because I find the questions uh, would be very beneficial to everybody else. Um, before I get into that, I want to talk about a couple of different things, which is um, I have my psychic ability class, which is open, but it's closing like in like a day or something. So if you're interested in taking that, that's the one I only open a few times a year. Um, definitely check that out at psychicabilityclass.com. If it's already closed by the time that you're listening to this, it'll be open again in like, you know, ne next, in 2018. I open it three to four times a year. I have some new things coming out next year in 2018, uh, which is going to be my mentorship program that is going to be like a monthly thing for, um, for more, um, more monthly mentorship stuff. Instead of having like just a mentorship session here or there, it's going to be um, more ongoing uh, monthly stuff. And I also will be opening my spirit communication class, which I know a ton of you are waiting for. I just wanted to cover some of those things because I actually... I always assume that everybody knows what I do, but I have a lot of new people who follow me on iTunes and YouTube and whatnot. And so what I do is I try to help everybody take the spiritual tools and gifts they were born with and help them use them in a way that enhances their everyday life. And I try to make things simple because I don't like how much the spiritual world has overcomplicated everything and making it seem like you've got to meditate, you know, an hour in the morning and an hour at night and you have to dedicate so much of your life to being a spiritual, you know, person or um, to developing your abilities because we just don't have time. Nobody has time. You know, who has time to do that? You have to work, you have kids, you have laundry, you have cooking, whatever. Um, and if you're lucky, you're still working out. So, uh, you know, I like to simplify things in a way that you're like, oh yeah, I can totally do that. Because guess what? You're using your spiritual side of yourself, regardless of if you meditate an hour in the morning and an hour each night. It's just a part of who you are. The soul and your psychic senses are built in. They come built in. They're not an add-on. You don't have to go purchase them later. You don't have to add it on later. You come all built in with your physical senses and your spiritual senses. Understanding how to utilize them because they don't come with a manual is a whole nother ballgame. And that's why I do the podcasting. That's why I do the classes. Um, that's why I also do readings. Um, and you can find out more about some of that regular kind of stuff. Plus... Uh, if you're wondering if you even have abilities, I have a couple of cool quizzes on my keys to spiritworld.com. So if you are wanting to become a part of my spirit community or it, the one that's on Facebook where we do a lot of discussions, or if you wanting to take one of the quizzes to find out if you're an empath or, um, what psychic abilities you have, definitely stop over to keys to spiritworld.com. The two quizzes will pop up. If you are interested in the spirit community, you can scroll down partway through the first page. I believe it says spirit community on there. If not, upper right hand corner, you can click on spirit community up there. It's a private group because I do monitor the group. I want it to be, um, I don't want it to be spammy. I don't want people saying things in there that are inaccurate because that's going against every ounce of time I spend which is trying to make sure you guys have accurate information information that's helpful and not just frightening, scary, or just not helpful. Um, I like to cut to the chase and make things simple, and that's what my page is about, So, or my groups, or both, because I also have a page. 
Um, so if you're looking for that, you're not going to find spammy stuff. I go in there, I read everything, I answer questions. Um, I'm, I'm in there, I'm very active in there. So if you want to take things one step further, that's a good place. But we also have a very good group, um, a very good community over there. You'll feel very welcome and, and very not alone if you're learning about any of this stuff. Um, but anyways, so the question I want to get to today was something I thought was a really good question. Um, it was her how her question was how does being proactive and allowing the universe and spirit guides uh, how does sorry how does being proactive and allowing the universe and spirit guides guide you work? So basically she's saying how do you be proactive, but at the same point allow the universe and spirit guides to guide you? How do you do both? Or do you just do one or the other? Because she actually went on to say, um, my question is, should we not be proactive since that seems to interview with allowing the universe to work its plan? And like I said, I thought that this, that this was a very good question. Um, Absolutely, you want to be proactive in your life. That is a non-negotiable. Um, because if you understand how the universal energy and universal laws work, your being proactive would come from, you know, having a thought to do something and then going out and trying to take action in order to have these things manifest into your life. Whether you believe in manifestation or not, I just mean manifest, you know, physically, whatever. It doesn't have to be energetically. But what happens by default, usually, when you're being proactive, if you're not blocking it or hindering it, is manifestation does occur. Because you are allowing, um, your thoughts become reality. And when you're allowing the universe and allowing the universal energy to just go out and create and form and then manifest into, you know, what you're desiring without blocking, that's just the natural flow of energy. Now, everybody or a lot of people, not everybody, but there are going to be people out there going, well, that's just a load of crap because I've been trying to manifest this house, this car, this job, this situation for so long. And I just want it so badly that, you know, I, and it's just not happening. So I don't believe in any of that stuff. That is some people's reality. They feel like they're trying and trying to manifest and they feel very frustrated and they don't feel like the outcome is happening. But when you understand how universal laws and universal energy works, wanting an outcome so badly of something very specific will very much block things that you're desiring. So for instance, how do I make this less confusing? You're desiring not a thing or an outcome, you're desiring a feeling. So for instance, if you're desiring a, a car or a house, you're usually desiring something that is a feeling not the actual uh, physical item itself. That's where people get very confused when it comes to a lot of attraction and um, being proactive with the universe and being proactive with their spirit guides is because they believe, because many people will say, well, you know, I really wanted this, this car and I ended up getting it. Sometimes it does work that way, but what you're, where, where we lose control is the manifestation of the item itself. So what you're really wanting to do when it comes to being proactive is you want to understand what you're being proactive for, the feeling. So you're being proactive for the feeling. And then you want to have an end goal, which would be potentially a car, potentially a house, potentially a new job. Um, you want to have that be the goal, but you want to be flexible in the outcome of the goal. So when you're being proactive with something in your life, figure out what feeling are you trying to manifest? What feeling are you trying to, what, what feeling are you desiring? So let's take the job. Maybe you want a job where you have more flexibility 
Maybe you want a job where you have more freedom. You can be more creative. See, those are feelings that you desire. So then what people do naturally when they're not working with the universal laws is they naturally begin to try to micromanage. And so they think that if they don't, because people have been taught over years, of course, that you have to put into place every single detail. And while it's okay to put into place details because that gives your mind something to focus on. So for instance, let's just say the job thing. Well, if I was, maybe you think if I was self-employed, doing something, whatever, um, you know, then that would create more freedom for the job. Um, you could have more creativity, um, you know, all of those feelings that you desire. You still have to have a focus, which would be, okay, I'm going to work towards and be proactive towards this focus, which would be, let's just say you pick freelancing, um, doing graphic design or something. Let me just pick and you, you're working towards that. But if you find that as you're working towards that, people are asking you other questions and then some stuff starts coming up where you have the opportunity to do something else self-employed, or maybe you end up with an opportunity to work for a company that wants a freelance graphic designer that can work from home, See, don't be so focused on your specific outcome that you're not flexible in what the universe and your guides are bringing to your front door, energetically speaking. Actually, I've had people show up at my front door, weird enough as that is, when I've been working with the universal laws. I literally, one time, got really frustrated with my, my pest control people, and I thought, this is ridiculous, I need new people and I don't have time to look, it would be really cool if somebody just came to my house and I kid you not, within 24 hours, a pest control company showed up on my front door. That was like very strange, but it happened. And that's just one story, I have others. But I wasn't necessarily, my hopes and dreams were not hinging upon these people showing up on my front door. I didn't have any sinking, desired feeling attached to it that if it didn't happen, all my dreams were going to be crushed and that's the second part of the problem when it comes to um, learning to manifest and working um, being proactive but allowing the universe to bring in stuff so you want to be proactive towards let's say the house um, so you would be proactive towards uh, maybe you would be saving money maybe you would be looking maybe you had some ideas of what the house looked like but you can't then go, this house must be in this specific location and it must be this specific way, must be in this price range, etc., etc. You have to be, you look for all those things, but when opportunity comes your way for something else, if opportunity comes your way for something else, that's where you're flexible. So you allow the outcome to unfold in a way that is your kind of, you, curiosity is helpful. Um, if you have opportunity that comes your way and you begin to become curious at what the universe and spirit guides have in, in, in store for you, then that will allow you to explore other options and not be so dead set on a specific outcome. So I know this is kind of hard to explain and I hope that I'm explaining it well, but basically, Yes, you want to be proactive because that starts the process of putting out mental energy and thought energy into creation. And then that starts the process of giving yourself a focus. So you want to be proactive. You want to allow that, that energy to begin going out in the universe and creating. And then you want to have a focus, which would be your destination. The difference is the destination. You don't want to be married to the destination as your focus. So that can be your your temporary focus and your potential outcome, but you wanna be very flexible into what starts flowing into your circle as you are proactive towards the destination. That's what screws people up. That's what really makes people 
fall off the rails, so to speak, when they're working with stuff. Because, it, like I said, then they we are kind of trained, and people who are proactive and really wanting to manifest things, they tend to be micromanagers. Not on purpose, not like that they want to control everything, but when they work really hard and put a lot of mental energy into achieving a specific desire, they begin to think it has to be that very specific desire. What I've learned over the years is when the universe and spirit guides get involved and they start bringing other things into your life that would be opportunities, many times those opportunities, and I would say by like 90%, those opportunities are far better than the ones that you've even come up with. Because you don't have enough knowledge to know what's going to then unfold as far as the universal energy and spirit guides are using this, you know, manifestation energy. You don't have enough knowledge to, to know what they're unfolding in front of you. So naturally people will resist because they will start going, wait a minute, but this is not what I'm, what I am heading towards. And this is not the outcome, so I'm not going to even explore this opportunity or this whatever it is that um, you're searching for or this, this destination and this focus. This is not what it is, um, so I don't want to move that direction because I'm very focused on this very specific outcome. And if and when you do that, you will be more disappointed more, more often than not because... Now you've created another feeling behind your being proactive. You've created a feeling of void. You've created a feeling of sadness, of worry. So now all these, the, these thoughts and things that are going out there when you're being proactive, I'm worried it's not going to be like this, or I, I feel sad and, and stressed out that I'm not going to get what I desire, and I'm feeling like it's not going to happen for me. Um, and it has to be this very specific way. And if you need things to be a very specific way, if you're being proactive to a destination that has to be a very specific, that becomes very stressful. And it becomes highly improbable. Not that it can't happen. Some things can happen that way. But for the most part, um, things happen for people who are flexible in the outcome. And so the key is flexibility in the outcome. Flexibility in the outcome, flexibility in the outcome. I cannot ex express that enough. Proactive, send the thoughts, the creation, move towards a destination, be flexible in the outcome. That's how working with the universe and spirit guides, that's how you allow them to guide you, is by being flexible in the outcome. And I know I just repeated that like seven times, but like I cannot get that through to you guys enough. Um, when, the for the people, not when, for the people who are not flexible in the outcome again, they, there's a desire or a feeling that they're wanting fulfilled. And they become very stubborn and going, if I don't have X, Y, Z exactly, then I won't have this desire or feeling fulfilled. And that's not true. Uh, so that's why you want to be flexible on the outcome. So the focus you want to be attached to, again, if you're doing, let's say the house, is maybe you want a bigger space. And that feels good to you, is to have just bigger space. Maybe you want something newer in a car, something that doesn't break down, and that feels good to you. You want to shoot for the feeling and then you can you can slap a picture on it, but don't. That's where you're flexible in the outcome, right? So you might say, "I want a specific this type of car," but I'm going to be, you know, I'm kind of shooting for that, but I'm going to be flexible. And then you stop becoming you stop becoming so attached to the actual physical outcome, and you start becoming more attached to the feeling. And that's where you will see some really amazing thing happen, things happen, is being very curious and more attached to the desired feeling, not the desired 
physical thing or not the desire, like, I don't know, because some things would be maybe a desired outcome in a situation or something. But, um, so, like, let's just say I'm going to use an example of maybe you're fighting with a friend or a family member or something. Um, sometimes you would work through, well, it'd be nice if they apologized or if, you know, we had this conversation, but really those little minute details, micromanaging those details are not really what's important. What's really important is I just really want to feel like this issue gets resolved in the quickest, fastest way possible. And I, I it will feel so good when it's over. Like, that's where you want to concentrate. And I know that sounds more vague, but if vague does it for you, that's what you need to do. So um, if you are looking for, a, I keep going back to the house, if you're looking for a house, um, you know, or a new job, you the desired outcome is to feel better at what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis for work. The desired outcome is to feel better and more spacious in the place that your your home is to feel that nice feeling when you're at home and then you take steps towards that so you allow the manifestation to occur and like I said I, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit but where people get hung up is the micromanaging part it's something that you know, it did take me a little while to work on when I was working with Universal Laws. It was kind of interesting because um, when I was younger, I worked with Universal Laws really well. And I'm talking about like younger, like 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, I just would desire these certain things and all of a sudden they just happen. But I wasn't like new carpet I wanted one time, but I didn't really have the money to do that. And the next thing I know... Uh, my basement flooded, which wasn't awesome, but I ended up having plenty of money for new carpet through the whole place. Um, you know, just desiring things like that, but not necessarily like all my hopes and dreams hinged upon it. And if it didn't happen, I would just be crushed. It was just something I desired and, and thought, you know what, at some point this is going to happen for me. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I would like to have, you know, something new. And it wasn't that I was attached to a very, you know, it had to be this color in this place and this price range. That's being more attached to something specific. And then as I got older, I got away from that a little bit more. And what gets you away from that is fear. Fear that you're not going to be able to attain something that you desire. So fear that you're, you know, being fearful and afraid that yeah, you're going to be, you're not going to have something you desire, that you're going to be sad, that you're going to be stuck, that you're going to be whatever. And once you start um, concentrating on the fear, oh man, that will just never, that will screw you up more than anything. Uh, once you just go, okay, well, this would be super cool if this happened, but you know, whatever, I'm just going to do this meanwhile anyways, and you're just kind of not attached to it, that allows something to kind of, you know, allows the energy to have the freedom to create something probably cooler and better than you ever imagined. When I, um, I created another business, um, that I have, I don't just have this one, but I have another one. And my desired outcome was to have something that I, you know, could work from for by myself or not by myself, but you know, not work for anyone. And that I could work on a schedule that I set for myself and that I could, you know, you know, make money while I was sleeping. I had no idea what that company was going to be, but I still um, had come up with ideas and I would do things. And I, next thing you know, I um, wrote some books and those books did really well. And then people started asking me to publish their books and my next thing that happened, I didn't think I had time. No, I don't have time. But then I thought, well, maybe I'll try it. And the next thing that happened is I opened a publishing company. And the publishing company has done better than I ever even just put much thought into. I didn't really, you know, it was something I desired to own a company and to have something that sort of kind of ran on its own and, you know, um, ran all the time absolutely happened and it's amazing to what's happened to it um when 
I opened classes, um, my desire was to really help people and to help them to, uh, you know, develop their abilities. When I started doing my podcast, it was to get over a fear that I had. Um, and these are just some examples. I hated the sound of my voice. And just FYI, I still can't stand the sound of my voice. But um, I got over my fear of speaking in front of people or, um, you know, on media. And um, I started my podcast just purely to get over that annoying fear that I had. And next thing I know, it's seven whatever years later, and my podcast does extremely well. And it wasn't something I set out to just, I'm going to just be this podcaster. You know, that wasn't something that I was desiring. I was desiring to get over fear and help people at the same time. And it turned out to be something really cool. My YouTube channel, um, I wanted to get over my fear of being on video. I don't like uh, being on video very much, but I really like to teach. And so um, it was to get myself comfortable with being on video and, you know, that took off. Um, and so I just, you know, I have, I have these desires myself as well. And that's how I use them is you kind of have to know yourself and what feelings you're trying to resolve and what you're trying to accomplish by doing certain things. And then just seeing what happens, seeing what the outcome is and, and not resist something that's not in your plan, so to speak. It doesn't mean you have to go every direction of every opportunity that comes if it doesn't feel good to you. But it's really a gift to be able to see what unfolds for you when you're not holding on to micromanaging your future. And truth be told, like I said, I've learned that the universe and your guides can fulfill your desire much better than you ever could have imagined doing it for yourself. They know you and have a better idea of your internal desires than you you will ever be able to get a handle and a grasp on. It's truly amazing. It's absolutely amazing how well that the universal energy and your spirit guides know you and know your desires. And that's where the trust factor comes in, that something will unfold. But the proactive part is imperative. So this was a little bit different than some of my other podcasts. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, comment below if you did. I love to read the comments and subscribe to iTunes or YouTube if you're enjoying the videos. And I'd love to see you in class or in my higher purpose learning group and check out those quizzes as well. That's keys to spiritworld.com. My psychic ability class closes in a day or so. Until next time, I hope that you pursue your dreams, be proactive, and I hope that you just see how well the universe and your guides know you. I think you will be amazed. All right. Have the most amazing day. Aloha.